This fire-breathing son of a bitch saw things no one had seen before. Ruffian Dick, the polyglot Victorian brawler who searched for the source of the Nile, entered Mecca in disguise and got a spear in the face for his troubles. Hello and welcome to The Odysseus Files, the YouTube channel that loves to dive into the lives and adventures of some of the most fascinating soldiers and explorers in history. Today we're going to talk about Sir Richard Francis Burton, the British soldier, explorer and scholar, who opened Victorian eyes to the unknown wonders of the world through his travels and explorations in Asia, Africa and the Americas. He was the first European to discover Lake Tanganyika and to penetrate Hatheto forbidden Muslim cities. He also translated some of the most famous works of literature from Arabic, Persian and Sanskrit, such as the Arabian Nights, the Kama Sutra and the Perfumed Garden. In this video we will explore his early life, his military career, his daring journeys, his literary achievements and his legacy. Early Life Richard Francis Burton was born over 200 years ago on March 19, 1821 in Torquay, Devonshire, England. He was the son of an army officer and a wealthy heiress. He had a restless and adventurous spirit from a young age. He travelled extensively with his family across Europe and learned several languages including French, Italian, Latin, Greek, Arabic and Hindi. He also developed a keen interest in different cultures, religions and customs. He was especially fascinated by the Orient and its mysteries. He attended Trinity College in Oxford but dropped out after two years due to his rebellious and unconventional behaviour. In his own words, fit for nothing but to be shot at for six pence a day, Burton enlisted in the Army of the East India Company at the behest of his ex-college classmates who were already members. Service in the East India Company Burton arrived in India following the disastrous First Anglo-Afghan War. 21,000 British and Indian soldiers had marched into Afghanistan. Just two British and several Indian soldiers escaped being killed or taken prisoner. He was posted to the 18th Bombay Native Infantry based in Gujarat under the command of General Charles James Napier. Burton quickly became obsessed with India. He mastered several Indian languages and dialects and studied the local customs and religions. His religious experiences were many and varied, including attending Catholic services, becoming a Naga Brahmin, adopting Sikhism, conversion to Islam and undergoing Chilafa Kwadiri Sufism. He seems to have held a particular interest in Islam, as Ed Rice states in Captain Sir Richard Francis Burton, 1990, quote, Thus he was circumcised and made a Muslim, and lived like a Muslim and prayed and practiced like one. Furthermore, Burton was entitled to call himself a Hafiz, one who can recite the Quran from memory. All faith is false, all faith is true, Burton wrote. Truth is a shattered mirror strewn in myriad bits while each believes his little bit the whole to own. Monkey Dictionary Burton's immersing himself in the cultures around him in India set him apart from the other soldiers. While in the army he even kept a large menagerie of tame monkeys in the hopes of learning their language apparently being able to identify up to 60 monkey words, which he recorded in a monkey vocabulary. Ruffian Dick Burton also earned the name Ruffian Dick, according to Thomas Wright, author of Life of Sir Richard Burton, 1906, for his, quote, demonic ferocity as a fighter, and because he had fought in single combat, more enemies than perhaps any other man of his time. He went on to write two manuals on the use of the bayonet and sabre, though in the latter case he had the temerity to criticise the great Henry Angelo, fencing master par excellence, and it must be said that neither manual was ever actually adopted by either the East India Company or the British Army itself. 
undercover agent. Burton's commanding officer, Sir Charles Napier, assigned Burton to more clandestine work. Burton thence grew an extra long beard, wore a wig, and donned the accoutrements of a merchant. Burton was sent on spying duties to troubled locations where he would often set up shop in the local bazaar. Using this as base, he would use his talents in languages and dialects to watch and listen. At one point, General Napier assigned Burton to investigate the male brothels of Karachi, rumoured to be frequented by the East India Company's soldiers. Burton's subsequent report on them was deemed too salacious to be published and was instead suppressed. Pilgrimage to Mecca In 1853, he took a leave of absence from the army and embarked on one of his most daring feats. He disguised himself as a Muslim pilgrim and travelled to Mecca and Medina, the holy cities of Islam that were forbidden to non-Muslims on pain of death. He risked his life to witness the rituals and ceremonies of the Hajj, the annual pilgrimage that millions of Muslims perform every year. It was this journey which first made Burton famous. He wrote a detailed account of it in his book, Personal Narrative of a Pilgrimage to Al Medina and Mecca, 1855. Next, Burton journeyed with other East India Company officers, including John Hanning Speak to the forbidden city of Hara in East Africa, where no European had ever been. Again donning full disguise, this time as an Arab merchant called Haji Mirza Abdullah, he actually met the ruler of Hara before returning safely to the coast of Somalia. While the expedition was camped near Babara, his party was attacked by a group of 200 Somali warriors. Speak was captured and wounded before he managed to escape. Burton was impaled with a javelin, the point entering one cheek and exiting the other. This wound left a huge scar that Burton carried for the rest of his life. He was forced to make his escape with a spearhead still in his face. He said later that, quote, the Somalis were a fierce and turbulent race. Discovering the source of the Nile after recovering, Burton rejoined the army and sought active service in the Crimean War against Russia with a corps of local fighters which was later disbanded. He served as an intelligence officer and a translator. He was wounded in action and received a medal for his bravery. After the war ended in 1856, funded by the Royal Geographical Society, Burton and Speak teamed up again to explore the uncharted lake regions of Central Africa, hoping also to discover the source of the Nile. They left Zanzibar in June 1857 and discovered Lake Tanganyika in February 1858. The expedition was plagued by a series of problems and tropical diseases took their toll on both men. Finally, Speak left a very sick Burton behind, journeying further north and became the first European to set eyes on Lake Victoria. Both men travelled home to England separately. Speak arriving first and claimed that he had discovered the Nile's source. Burton argued that Speak lacked conclusive evidence and survey measurements. A bitter public quarrel between the men began and continued after Speak's second expedition, 1860 to 1863, to the Lake Region with James Augustus Grant. It came to a head on 16 September 1864, just before the two men were due to debate the Nile issue in front of the British Association for the Advancement of Science. News of Speak's death in a freak hunting accident arrived. Was it an accident, or was it suicide? Many believed it was the latter. Burton was married in January 1861 to Isabella Rundle and entered the diplomatic service as a British consul in various locations in Africa and Asia. He used his diplomatic position as an opportunity to explore new lands and cultures. He travelled extensively. Apart from leading the expeditions to discover the sources of the Nile River with John Hanning Speak as mentioned, Burton also went on to study the wildlife and tribes of West Africa, investigated the slave trade in East Africa, visited the ancient ruins of Syria, collected manuscripts and artefacts from Persia, and documented the history and geography of Brazil. He even found the time to travel to the United States meeting Brigham Young on an expedition to the Mormons of Utah in April 1860. Literary Achievements Burton was not only an explorer, but also a prolific and erudite author. 
He wrote numerous books and scholarly articles about subjects ranging from human behaviour, travel, falconry, fencing, sexual practices, ethnography, mythology, folklore, history, philosophy, religion, poetry, etc. He also translated some of the most famous works of literature from Arabic, Persian and Sanskrit into English. He is best known for his inexpurgated translation of 1001 Nights, 1885, a collection of stories from various sources that are narrated by Scheherazade, a clever and beautiful woman who tells tales every night to her husband the king to postpone her execution. Burton's translation is remarkable for its accuracy, its richness of language, its annotations and its inclusion of erotic and controversial material that was omitted or censored by previous translators. The publication of this and his earlier translation of the Kama Sutra, 1883, the ancient Indian treatise on erotic love, intoxicated Victorian society. Burton was astonished at his newfound popularity. I have struggled for 47 years, distinguishing myself honourably in every way that I possibly could. I never had a compliment, nor a thank you, nor a single farthing, he wrote. I translate a doubtful book in my old age, and I immediately make 16,000 guineas. In The Aleph, 1945, a short story by Jorge Luis Borges, the narrator finds a manuscript by Richard Burton. In it, he describes a magical mirror that when looked into reflects the entire universe from every angle simultaneously. In a sense, this mirror might be seen as a symbol of Burton himself, opening Victorian eyes to the wonders of the world through his exploits and his sublime writing. Legacy Sir Richard Francis Burton died on October 20, 1890 in Trieste. He lies next to his wife Isabel in an extraordinary stone tomb shaped like a Bedouin tent in Mortlake, London. Isabel, his loyal companion and supporter throughout his life, burned many of his papers and manuscripts after his death, fearing that they would damage his reputation or offend the public. However, she also preserved and published some of his works and wrote a biography of him. Burton is widely regarded as one of the most remarkable and versatile figures of the 19th century. He was a pioneer in exploration, anthropology, linguistics, literature and cross-cultural understanding. He was a master of languages and a lover of cultures. He was a rebel and a visionary. He was a man of many talents and many contradictions. He was Sir Richard Francis Burton. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you next time.